Well, hello, beautiful moms. Uh, we are excited to be here and to share our conversation with you today. Uh, we also, um, yeah, we have just, just some neat things that we can share about what God has done in our lives. Each of us are moms to kids at different ages, um, but all of us have a common story. And we have a story that um, sometimes would be considered disappointing, a story of loss. And uh, we're talking today about the struggle of miscarriage and infertility. And we're talking about it because we know many of you have dealt with the struggle as well. And so as we share some of our uh, struggles together, we want to make sure that um, we know that you are heard, you are loved, and God loves you, and he has a plan even in the middle of just this crisis and something that you really didn't invite into your life. So that's really why we're here, and we're sharing stories together. So uh, we won't be able to share all our story at length. We would love to do that sometime if you are interested, uh, but for time's sake, we are going to just talk about uh, some of the ways that God stepped in to the middle of our broken places and broken seasons of life. So um, I think we'll just start and uh, we can start over here with Stephanie. If you just share uh, what your family looks like now um, and when, when your miscarriage happened. Uh, I have two boys and uh, my third was a miscarriage at 12 weeks and yeah, yeah. That was just not too long ago, right? I mean, no, it happened in February of this year, of 2022. And yeah. so, um, very fresh, but um, just seeing a lot that God has done through it, even yeah. though it just happened earlier this year. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And Jess? Um, I'm a mommy of three. Uh, my first miscarriage was before my oldest son, and... Then I had two before my second son. I have two little boys and a little girl. Yep. And Jenny. Yes. So I have an eight-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. But prior to that, I had a pregnancy loss at fi uh, five months and three days. And that was through fertility treatment that yeah. that pregnancy I was able to have. And then after my son, I had a pregnancy loss at or miscarriage at seven weeks and three days. Mm, wow. So all of us have a commonality. Mine wasn't miscarriage, mine was infertility. I dealt, dealt with about five years of infertility with no apparent reason. And so I think when we walk through journeys like this, we don't know what to do sometimes with the pain and uh, the struggle, uh, sometimes not knowing whether we should share it with someone or not. And so my next question would be, when that was going on in your life, uh, did you share this with someone or did you kind of keep it personal to yourself? So I'll, I'll just start with you, Jenny. Sure. Um, so my pregnancy loss was so sudden um, and mm -hmm. I actually was very sick. So I was forced to tell people because they actually knew it. Um, and being a very private person at the time, it was very difficult to have everything exposed. Um, but I felt like during that time, not only did my immediate family know, there were friends, there were people at work. Um, so it was really challenging. Yeah. But um, when I did reveal and share, I should say, um, with those that weren't part of that immediate circle, yeah. um, it was something that I felt was helpful, um, even yeah. though it was difficult. Yep, yep. What about you, Jess? Did you share your story right away or? Um, well, the first time around, I think just because uh, it took us about eight months to get pregnant once we really started trying, we were so excited and really kind of immature that we kind of went ahead of ourselves. I even made a little picture frame and it said May on it because that's when the baby was due and we never got a picture to put in the frame. Um, and I really felt like a burden. Um, it was just really heavy. And then um, even after the birth of my first son and then going through my second miscarriage, um, we decided not to tell anybody because, you know, the enemy played with us and at least with me. I can't really speak for my husband, but I felt like we were such a burden that we couldn't have that 
Um, and then we had a miscarriage right after that one and I had to get surgery and so we had to tell them either way yeah. and that was like God saying you have to always come back to me you have to always come back to to the community that is put there for you which is at yeah. that time was beautiful moms awesome. and I didn't go I had the ability to go to people and I didn't mm -hmm. um, and I definitely learned through that yeah if, you know yeah so that's good what about you Steph I'm a really private person, so uh, with our first two pregnancies, we didn't share uh, the news of being pregnant until uh, we were past the 12-week mark, but with the third pregnancy, we actually did share, um, and by sharing with others in my beautiful mom's group and table, I was really able to find people that had experienced it before me, and they were able to tell me what I would experience physically, but also I could go to them and I was able to say how I was feeling and I knew that they understood exactly how I was feeling as well. And it just really helped me know that I wasn't doing it alone. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, I know for me it was uh, a while ago when I had the infertility struggle, but I just felt broken. I felt like there was something wrong with me and even though all the testing didn't really find anything, I felt like I didn't really wanna share and talk about it. Now my family knew, but I really kept it private. And for years, I just remember struggling by myself or with maybe just a few people not being open about it. And I regret that. I think I've talked to people now who've had secondary infertility or other issues and they're open about it. And I feel like it is such a difference in just the peace that you can have. We can learn from each other, mm -hmm. but um, that was that was just my story. So I don't know. I think it's always better to have just that posse around you, those people who are going to encourage you, even though they might not want to say or do. There's there's people in your corner, and God provides those. And certainly through beautiful moms, there's people who, if you don't know anybody, they can come alongside you and love on you too in the middle of that. Um, so let me just go to another question. So uh, we know that uh, all of us are believers in God and we've walked with God through this chaos in our lives. So as you walk through your pregnancy loss, your miscarriage, um, all, the, all the things, what, how did God show up in the middle of those really dark times? Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you see him or what did that look like for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, they definitely were dark times. Um, yeah. One minute I'm at work, um, and the next minute I'm not for three months. Mm -hmm. And for me, work was really my identity, where I found yeah. success, where I had value. Yeah. And I think that that is something with the pregnancy loss was so important for me to understand that my value is not, and my identity is not my work, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um, during, when I was delivering, um, they asked, for us to name the baby. Yeah. And so my husband named the baby literally as I was delivering and mm. he named her Faith. And so it wasn't something we talked about. We didn't know at mm. the time we were gonna even have a girl. So I think that mm. what God showed me mm. was one, very early on where my husband was with his faith journey, mm -hmm. that God gave him faith. Mm. God gave me faith, even though it felt like I was losing her yeah. um, or I, I lost her, it was a gift of just reigniting and also like realigning my purpose with him hmm. and not with yeah. the world or with the work. Right. And it caused me to have to reevaluate my priorities yeah. and just understand that I have value outside of work, which sounds mm -hmm. silly now, mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. then it's, you know, yeah. that's what, you know, I was just structured to do and be and have success. Mm -hmm. And I had to draw closer to God and understand not so much, I never questioned why, I just always wanted to understand like how was I supposed to mm. grow? Uh, what, what did he wanna do with this mm. situation, with this trauma, um, with my health? Yeah. Um, but it was important for me to understand that I didn't lose mm. anything that God has given me. Like he's not gonna stop 
in the middle, yeah. right? Yeah. And even though I didn't feel it then, I can definitely understand and appreciate that now. But mm. it was dark. There were a lot of negative things I was telling myself. I wanted to honestly disappear. Mm. I didn't want to be around people. And being a private person prior made mm -hmm. that a lot easier. Mm. But I think the enemy used iso was trying to use isolation yeah. to keep me disconnected, yep. not only mm -hmm. from other people, right. um, but also from God. And God used that isolation for me to draw me closer to him. Mm. But it took a lot of time for mm -hmm. me to understand that. Mm -hmm. But the isolation isn't always a negative thing. It's just how are you choosing to That's spend that good. time isolated? That's good. And you did choose God. Absolutely. Yeah. I chose faith. Yeah. Right? So something yeah. that I lost yeah. has become such a prominent Aww. piece of my life. Oh, mm -hmm. That's beautiful. What about you, Jess? What did God speak to you, or how did he, you know, show himself in the middle of your grieving? Um, well, I had to submit to God because uh, my first miscarriage, I was not a believer. Um, but from the time that I had my first miscarriage to the time I was saved was three years. So you can imagine going to different things, like even trying to rely on my husband, who's a wonderful just he's my rock but like he's not gonna be my answer yeah he's you cannot what I've learned is you cannot address your issues with anybody but God and have peace yeah. mm -hmm. nobody yeah. gives you peace but God mm -hmm. and um, so that was interesting it was basically three years of blaming more myself or saying oh this is because of something that I did in my past and if I, if I was a person to believe in God, it's probably because he's, you know, he's probably punishing me for mm. who I used to be. Mm. Um, or I don't deserve this because I never really was driven to have kids. I never was like, oh, yeah, I really want kids, mm. you know. Mm. But now, you know, you can see how God has worked that out mm -hmm. and just changed everything. And um, now that I am a believer, and it's funny, my third miscarriage, I had to get a DNC. Um, and then they found out that it was ectopic, so I had to get further procedures. But um, I ended up, there was a lady next to me, and there was just a curtain. And I just said, what's your name? What's your name? And I wrote her name down, and I said, I'm going to pray for you. I didn't even know what she was going through, but I did reach to, out to her a couple months later because I found that note a couple months later. Mm -hmm. But to go from being mm -hmm. so lost yeah. and, like, trying to find the reason looking up facts, like trying to understand it scientifically and still not being satisfied. Mm -hmm. right, right. Um, and then having, you know, my relationship with God and my community here yeah. and being brave enough in a really bad moment for the third time to want to pray over somebody else if that's not the Holy Spirit. Right. I don't know what that right. is. Right. So you know? God really moved in your life, yeah. like from taking you to not believing and then becoming a believer, walking that out totally yeah. differently in both, you know, or all yeah. three experiences. But it was like, yeah. it was full submission. You have to take yeah. yourself away. Like, we're so carnal that, like, you know, I believe there was something. I would say I was agnostic, but what, why couldn't I take, why couldn't I make that jump? Like, it was mm. just me in selfishness. Mm. And then once I did, you know, that saved me, and that saved me, that's, made it where I wanted to have more children, right. save my marriage, I mean, everything. Because I had a foundation. I didn't have a foundation to go to before. Wow, yeah. Oh, that's good, good. Steph, what, um, what was God speaking to you in just this past year as you walked through that unexpected pregnancy and then the unexpected loss yeah. as well? So I think really for me, um, just kind of taking the lies that the enemy just was trying to get me to believe um, captive. We had this pregnancy, um, it was a surprise, and uh, we weren't planning on having any more children. So um, finding out that you're pregnant and you weren't planning, it's just, it really is a wonderful, beautiful thing, and you get excited. And so for me and my husband, it was really hard because we, we did want to know why, but also we felt that at, it was kind of God not being uh, good to us at the same time. Uh, that was a huge lie, and um, we knew that wasn't true, but uh, 
we felt like we had the surprise and it was just being ripped away. And um, so for me, I had to go back to kind of what we learned in Beautiful and, and take the lies captive. And so I remember being at the Beautiful conference and uh, Christine Kane saying, stay on the ship. And so I just decided I need to be in the word of God. I need to find these verses to combat these lies because I know that God is good. And so that's what I did. And um, believing that God is good, it was really important to me and knowing that, but also just taking the other lies that I wasn't good enough to be a mom to three or that God loves the women around me more than he loves me. Um, and, and that's not true. God showed me and revealed to me that, you know, yes, he, he loves me um, by reading his word, but it also, in reading that word, I, I remember that it's not that he loves the women more than me. It's that his plan for my life is different than the plan mm-hmm. that he has for their lives, that my story is different than yeah. their story, and they're not meant to be the same. So when I see a woman that has a successful pregnancy, or I see the pregnancy announcement, or the woman that is has a success, successful surprise pregnancy, I can now look at her and be happy for her instead of being just so gutted and sad because mm-hmm. I felt that when I initially saw those things that God loved them more than me. And now mm-hmm. I can say, you know what? Um, God doesn't love them more than me. It's just yeah. that this that is not my story Mm -hmm. it's not my journey and in realizing that i've been able to see like god's plan is different and and with that i'm now able Mm -hmm. to share my story with other people wow that's good i think i agree like yeah god i feel like i've known god for a long time but when i was walking through my struggle of wanting children and not understanding why we couldn't get pregnant and I was older too and so I'm like oh god it's time you know like let's get to it god and it uh it reminded me that god is in control and I'm not right Uh, because we tend to want to control everything Mm -hmm. in our lives uh as women and as moms um and so I had to die to that and then for me it was just a faith journey like when you said you named your baby Uh, faith it's like that's what it comes down to it's Mm -hmm. like god am i going to believe that you have your plan for me and that it's better than what i would conjure up on my own because i kind of feel like we tend to lay out our lives and when it doesn't go like we want um then there's this disappointment and sometimes it's month after month or year after year and for me it was okay god where are you Mm -hmm. uh i knew he was present and I never walked away or stepped away, but I still, I feel like there's many people who are in that place now, whether it's, I just lost a baby, I can't get pregnant again, um, struggling with, you know, a future, you know, family, but, uh, but we have to own that, that faith relationship. Mm-hmm. What other things jumped out at you when you're trying to pursue God or you're trying to get healing and yet you hear the wrong voices. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'd say for me, the most important thing was one, the prayer card, because we we had a burial a week, a little bit less than a week after um, I delivered, and there was a prayer card that came with that that spoke of God's promise, spoke of God's grace, um, and a rainbow after your storm. It talked about a lot of rain Mm. and storms. And so um, part of, what I was going through um, with the pregnancy is that I had Bell's palsy, I had uh, um, preeclampsia and help, so I was very sick and I didn't know it until all these yeah. things happened very quickly. So the paralysis of my face yeah. left me, one, wanting to be isolated, but mm-hmm. also I needed to like talk and mm-hmm. heal. And so for me, scriptures were great, but that was like me reading them either aloud or yes, like in my in my head. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was worship. Like I needed to have God's voice yeah. present, yeah. even when I didn't want to speak it, because I didn't feel it. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of people say fake it till you make it, and mm-hmm. I faithed it 
till I made it. Mm -hmm. And I feel mm -hmm. like God wanted me to worship with him yeah. and to praise him in spite of what I was feeling, but not ignoring that those feelings are real. Yeah. I was depressed. Yeah. Um, I was um, very resentful of people wanting me to just be better mm -hmm. um, because it was over and you know, mm -hmm. no one wants to necessarily always sit with you in the pain. Aww. Cause it's hard, yeah. it is yeah. hard. <laughs> Um, but God will meet you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was important to recognize that I can praise him mm -hmm. and I can worship mm -hmm. and I can be sad. Like that duality is what makes me human, right? Like when, I, when I'm eating and that tear comes on the paralysis side of my face, paralysis side of my face, I'm still alive. God is still great. His promises are so true. Yeah. And so no matter what I'm going through, even in the depth of depression and fear and anxiety, God will not leave me. Yeah. And so worship and praise, specifically gospel. Yeah. I could tell you a lot of gospel songs that pulled me through. <laughs> that's what that's yeah. what really saved me and helped me and helped me to know that God is doing a new thing. He's yeah. not going back. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's so good. What about you guys? Um, well, like I've said to all you ladies, I really believe that in infertility and miscarriage that the enemy just sits and festers in the guilt. Mm -hmm. um, and like Jenny said, y everyone should know that it's okay to feel those feelings. It's okay mm -hmm. to have that loss and then be jealous of someone you see that has a baby you know, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be disappointed in God. He's a big God. You mm -hmm. can tell him that. You can have that conversation with him. He wants to hear that from you. Um, it's basically okay to not be okay. Uh, like when Stephanie was in the hospital and she and I spoke, the first thing that we said to each other, she said, Jessica, this is not okay. And I said, no, it's not okay. Mm. But then we prayed. We still had our faith. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Anything you want to add? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like there's, I feel like there's so much you can add and talk about I with know. it. Um, staying in the Word, for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, staying in the Word was very so important good. to me. Like, Jenny's worship, mine was staying in the Word. And um, I, I remember the very first time I picked up the Bible because I didn't want to read the Bible, to be honest with you. I didn't feel like doing it. Um, but I knew that from my foundation and in faith that I needed to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the very first verse I read was actually on um, the beautiful plan. And um, it was from John, and it was talking about it's okay to grieve. It was Jesus talking, saying mm -hmm. that it's okay to grieve and that... Um, you know, nothing can take away your joy. And in that moment, just reading it, I felt like God saying, even though it was about Jesus, like, it's okay for me to grieve. It's okay for me to be sad mm -hmm. and mourn the loss of my child. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, um, it was a great reminder that even though the baby is not here on this earth, that I can still find joy because one day I am going to be with Jesus and I will see that baby again. Yeah. And so that was something yeah. for me, just staying in the word. Every time I went into the word in those first few months, I just, God met me there. And it, there were always verses and that just really spoke to how I was feeling at that moment, whether it was anger or sadness mm -hmm. or it, you know, any of the lies I was believing, there was something there for me to help me just heal. Yeah, yeah. That's I, that's the power of God's word, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it is so powerful to change our lives, change our minds, change our actions, get us out of the pit. Um, I know I had numerous verses, but there's one in the Old Testament, Second Chronicles sixteen nine, I believe. It says, "For the eyes of the Lord move." Um, back and forth throughout the whole world, looking to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. And I needed strength. I, it was a long journey for me. And so uh, that was just one of those. It's like, okay, God, if you're looking for me, I want to be found. Each of us would love to share more of our story. If any of you watching feel like you connected with one of us or have something similar, uh, know that we would be open to talking a little bit more and want to hear about your story as well. So thanks for joining us on our panel today. Bye-bye.